A man became an instant millionaire after an expensive space rock crashed through his roof. And a suspect tried to escape the FBI using an underwater sea scooter. And a teenager was woken from a 62-day coma by the words chicken filet. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News. This is the only daily pod, daily news podcast, daily weird news podcast, excuse me. Oh, we finally got it right. Whew, only been doing this 900 episodes. Of course I screw up. You're listening to Weird AF News with Jonesy. A coffin maker becomes an instant millionaire after a space rock crashes through his roof. A coffin maker in Indonesia became an instant millionaire when a $1.8 million meteorite crashed right through the roof of his home. This lucky guy, what's his name? Joshua Hutagalung. He was at home when the football-sized meteorite smashed through the veranda at the edge of his living room. Oh, he has a veranda at the edge of his living room. Sounds to me like he was already living it up in life. Sounds to me like he doesn't need $1.8 million. He's got a veranda. I do not have a ver- veranda. I'm recording in a closet. I could use a $1.8 million lump of space rock crashing through my apartment, my crappy apartment roof. The experts have looked into this. They have hailed the 4.5 billion year old space rock as one of the most significant meteorite finds ever, saying that it could contain elements which give clues to the origins of life. Now, this coffin maker in Indonesia named Joshua, he has already sold this rock to a specialist collector, giving him enough money to retire and build a new church in his village. Oh, he's doing some special things with the rock. Nice things for the community. A new church. And he's going to fix that veranda, I assume. Probably make a bigger veranda. I'm, uh, I'm fascinating, fascinated with the whole process of selling a meteorite to a specialist collector. Is there just a bunch of people out there that buy meteorites, these people? What, what kind of collector... Is it that just buys space rocks? Hey, something crashed through your roof? Yeah, let me take a look. This is what Joshua said about it. He says, I was working on a coffin near the street in front of my house, you know, as I usually do. I'm a coffin maker, by the way. Uh, I heard a booming sound that made my house shake. The whole house just shook. It was like a tree had fallen right on it. I went inside. Well, it was too hot, this rock, to pick up. So my wife dug it out with a hoe. <laughs> Wow, imagine that, him and his wife finding a steaming meteorite in the home. He was given the equivalent of 30 years salary for this 2.2 kilogram rock. Wow, 30 years salary. Oh, that would be good. I I could use 30 years of salary. That would be about uh, $30,000. That would be... (laughs) Jokes, jokes, guys, jokes. Joshua is a kind-hearted father of three... He has pledged to use some of the money to build a church and improve his life a little bit. Here's a quote from him. Nice guy. I have always wanted a daughter. I hope this is a sign that I'll be lucky enough now to have a daughter. Yeah, you know, when a meteorite crashes through your house, that means daughter, right? This is like a gender reveal space rock. (laughs) The space rock expert, Jared Collins. Ooh, Jared Collins, you space rock expert. How do you get to be a space rock expert? Hang out in the desert a lot, I'd imagine. Just looking for space rocks. Yeah, watch a lot of sci-fi, I'd imagine. Bunch of X-Files. How do you become a space rock expert? I am curious, Jared Collins. He was dispatched from his home in Bali to, to secure the meteorite. <laughs> it's like a sending out the fire department. Woo, woo, we got a space rock in uh, the northeast corner of the island. On my way. I'm going to secure it. How do you secure a meteorite, by the way? I'm curious. Uh... Meteorites that hit the Earth can actually sell for millions, it says. They're popular with collectors, particularly those with a good story behind them. Oh, this one has a great story behind it. It crashed through a guy's veranda. He's not going to have to make coffins for 30 years, and he's going to build a church. Meteorites that strike objects or have been seen by witnesses can command extremely high prices. Ooh, if someone actually saw a witness. We have a witness right there. I'm going to require an extra million because I have a witness. We got it, we got it on camera. Space objects made from iron nickel palisite laced with olivine crystals are particularly desirable. Did you guys know that? What are these olivine crystals they're speaking of? 
Experts say the market for meteorites is driven by those fascinated by space and the fact that they are often some of the oldest objects ever found on Earth. Celebrities, including Steven Spielberg and Nicolas Cage, have bought meteorites at auctions. Well, I can understand if you're really wealthy buying a meteorite, some cool space rock to put in your living room to show off. Hey, anybody want to see something that's 4.5 billion years old? That's right, billion years old. Check that out, that little rock right there in the corner. And then people can get really high and look at a rock and be like, whoa, man, dude, that means like this thing is like totally older than the dinosaurs, bro. Oh, man, this thing came from the sky, man. Oh, right. Anyone want to smoke a space rock? Can you smoke it? Let's try. A suspect tried to escape FBI agents using an underwater sea scooter in a frigid California lake. Did you even know that they had underwater sea scooters? Is that like a hybrid between a submarine and a scooter? A sea scooter, is that what Aquaman has and rides around on at the bottom of the ocean? I need to know more about these sea scooters and how much they cost. A man was wanted for his role in a Ponzi scheme. A $35 million Ponzi scheme. You know, I don't like these Ponzi schemers. I really don't. It's a real shame. And, you know, these guys, they have this is like white-collar crime, so they don't really do hard time. I wish they would because you destroy lives with these Ponzi schemes, for real. Anyways, he was arrested Monday after evading the FBI. He swam into California's largest reservoir using an underwater sea scooter, they say. Matthew Piercy is his name. He spent 25 minutes in frigid Lake Shasta using the Yamaha 350LI submersible, submersible device before he eventually resurfaced and was handcuffed. What is this submersible device? I need to Google it. Well, I'm looking at one of these. By the way, they're about 1,500, and they don't look like a submarine. They look like uh, a small rocket that would propel you. There's a little light on it. I guess this thing just pulls you under the water, but how do you stay under for 25 minutes? I don't see an oxygen tank. You must have your own oxygen tank, I imagine, and then you take this thing down in inside the ocean or whatever body of water you're trying to run from the FBI in after you steal millions of dollars from unsuspecting investors. When the agents went to arrest this Piercy, this is how it all went down. This guy hopped in a pickup truck, led them on a chase that ended at the shoreline of Lake Shasta, north of Redding, California. Then Piercy abandoned his truck near the edge of the lake, pulled something out of it and swam into the lake. Piercy spent some time out of sight underwater where law enforcement could only see bubbles. <laughs> well, they could just follow the bubbles, you idiot. Agents later learned that Piercy had a sea scooter. That's what it was. A motorized device that pulls users underwater at speeds of about four miles an hour. Oh, okay. So it doesn't go very fast. It has underwater propulsion that allows users to cruise at depths of about 100 feet below the surface. Here's a quote from one of the agents. Yeah, you know, see, you never know what is going through someone's mind, see, when they're being pursued by the FBI. And uh, we kept investigating, see, and all of a sudden today, see, here he is trying to escape into a lake, see, huh? Using a submersible device. Ah, well, I never. That was an FBI agent in 1930. Last week, a grand jury indicted Piercy and his business partner, Kenneth Winton of uh, Sacramento. Piercy is accused of bilking investors. Bilking, I think that means stealing. Bilking investors into giving $35 million to his company. Ah, this guy is such a piece of crap, man. Unbelievable. And I love that he was caught. I love that his plan to escape the FBI by going underwater four miles an hour. <laughs> his plans were foiled, as they say. Well, if you're going to use words like bilked, I'll use foiled. You know, just keeping it old school. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. A teenager is awoken from a 62-day coma by the words chicken filet. 
Yeah, of course. I mean, chicken filet would probably snap me out of a coma. I love chicken filet. A young man who had been badly injured from a traffic accident and had been in a coma for 62 whole days suddenly became conscious when he heard his brother mention his favorite dish, the chicken filet. Oh, how it went down. An 18-year-old named Chu was involved in a road accident when he was riding his scooter. During the collision, the poor kid suffered some serious damage to multiple organs in his body. Rushed to the hospital, he was rated with a coma index of three. They have a coma index? I've never heard of such a thing. What is coma index three? Does that mean you'll be woken only to the sounds of food? I need to know more. The article goes on to say all of his injuries that he had in this accident. Um, There's a lot here, and I don't think I need to get into the details of it. Wow, they're really getting specific. This is too much for an article. I can't, I don't even want to read this. It's grossing me out. The doctors performed emergency surgery. That's all you really need to know. They were able to stabilize his condition, but he fell into a deeper coma. It doesn't say what coma index. I assume he went to four or five. During his hospitalization, he underwent six operations, which included what? what? So many operations. What? He had a crane. Well, I'm going to try and say these things. I can't believe how much they did to this guy. What? Craniotomy, laparotomy, a right kidney nephrotomy, a splenectomy, liver repair, right clavicle and right femur open reduction, internal fixation, bilateral internal iliac artery immobilization, enterostomy. (laughs) What? I mean, what didn't you do to the guy? Everything but a hysterectomy, it sounds like. Well, that's when the medical staff attributed the young man's ultimate recovery, not to their work but to his strong will to survive. And the love of chicken. With his family by his side, praying that he would wake up soon. On the 62nd day, his older brother suddenly joked, Brother, I'm going to get you your favorite chicken filet. Unexpectedly, Chu's pulse began to accelerate. He miraculously began to regain consciousness and his vital signs began to stabilize. Ooh, good for him. Got up with the chicken. Good move by the brother, by the way. Way to go. Way to go uh what dish would wake you up out of a coma i wonder you guys could reach out to the show and let me know what exactly would wake you out of a coma what's your favorite dish i'm not gonna cook it but i'll order it from zanzibar um (laughs) i gotta tell you a funny story when i was asked to go try to wake a woman out of a coma with my comedy yeah, this this is a true story. My aunt reached out to me one day. She said, hey, Jonesy. Actually, no, she doesn't call me Jonesy. She calls me Chris. She said, my friend Sandy is in Los Angeles, and she's been in a coma for a while, and they're about to pull the plug on her. And if you wouldn't mind, we've tried everything. They've, the family's tried everything to get her out of it. And uh, we thought that, uh, hey, maybe a comedian come, comes down and tells jokes. Maybe that'll work. I mean, desperation here. So... I, you know, I, I adore my aunt, and I, I never met these people, but I thought, you know what, why not give it a try? At least I'll get a good story out of it, and maybe I'll wake up somebody out of a coma with my jokes. Now, you know, likely to awaken someone out of a coma has never really been the Yelp review on my jokes, but I, hey, look, at you got you to gotta just try, right? So I went over to the hospital. It was out here, right off Venice Boulevard, I remember, and I, I went up there to talk to this woman do some jokes. No, no family members were there. Thankfully, that would have been embarrassing. Um, they'd be like, why is a stranger here talking about his nut allergy to our relative in a coma? But I, you know, I, I brought my notebook. I did my thing, man. I just started telling some jokes. Nothing was happening. She was, she, it was difficult to look at her. She really was, you know, she was on a machine and I, I, you know, I had never really been around someone in a coma before. Um, I tried some of the new material, you know, nothing, nothing at all. Uh, by the way, that's not one of those moments where you want to kill with your material, if you know what I'm saying. No, you don't. The opposite, actually, opposite. Uh, by the way, the whole time I'm doing it, the nurses could see me because her, her bed was very close to the reception. Never once did they come over and question, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, it just seemed quite normal to them, I guess. I don't know. Do people do such things when someone's in a coma? Does a mariachi band just show up and just try its best? I mean, it was as though they were ac- accustomed to seeing such things when someone's in a coma. Just a random person telling jokes. 
You know, I did my best. I mean, I must have told jokes for 30 minutes, trying out new material. I really did this. And, you know, nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. And, uh, yeah, there's not a very happy ending to that story. I'm going to end it there. But it, it is weird. It's something weird that I did, and I'll never, ever forget it. And I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I tried. Uh, it makes a good story, of course. And, you know, you learn something when you do things like that. I mean, I never knew that... When someone's in a coma, you, you know, try different things to get them out. I'd, I'd never, I'd never heard of that. I'd never experienced that. So it's a very good learning experience for me. And I don't, I never met the family. I don't even know if they tried, they, if they know that I did that. I assume my aunt informed them. But um, yeah, that's my personal story. I don't know if this is a place for it, but I just thought I'd share that with you. That's um, absolutely true. Thank you for listening. Yay! Hey, everyone. It's your host. The host of Weird AF News, Jonesy. I'm still alive. I'm in a closet. And I want to give a big thank you to Kellen Wolf, who bought me some coffee off my website, weirdafnews.com, where you can buy me coffees. Yeah, just click that button on the homepage, buy Jonesy a coffee. You can also leave me a nice note, as, uh, as Kellen did. Kellen writes, My little family enjoys your show. We love your sense of humor and what you bring. Sending you peace, love, happiness, and all the good vibes. Thank you for keeping us laughing, Jonesy. Big heart. Man, that's just so lovely. Thank you so much, Kellen and family. I, I so appreciate this. I'm happy to bring some uh, peace, love, and happiness and, and good vibes into your life and to keep you laughing. Um, it feels really good. I'm glad. And I appreciate the coffee so much. I will definitely put this to good use as I enjoy being highly caffeinated. I don't think my liver appreciates it, but um, the rest of me, more importantly, my brain appreciates it. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much. I, I love I love to hear from fans. I love it when, uh, when I get some support. It's just, it's a good feeling. It lets me know that what I'm doing is improving people's lives, you know, touching people, affecting them. You know, not not changing the world here, but you know we're doing it in doing it in the little way that I can, which is uh, yeah, a little news show five days a week, trying to get some laughs. I know I often will go on an angry rant, <laughs> so please forgive me those sometimes. But I'm a what can I say? I'm a I'm an angry Bostonian. You know, Bostonians complain. I mean, this is what we do. We, we're full of grievances. That's why we're so funny. Um, <laughs> we sit around. And drink Dunkins and just complain. That's uh, that's our whole life. You know, <laughs> you don't believe me? Yeah, come come visit my family. I'll show you. It's hilarious. Um, lots of complaining, lots of Boston accents, lots of coffee, of course. Lots of coffee, lots of coffee cake, crullers. What are you into? What are you friggin' into? Donuts? Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What else did I want to say? Oh yeah, if you'd like to uh, follow me on the social medias, here's what we have here. Uh, we have Instagram, which is at Funny Jones. Twitter at Funny Jones and on Facebook Comedian Jonesy, yeah. And uh, Weird AF News has a bunch of social account- accounts as well. You can look for those. Just type in Weird AF News. And uh, yeah, check out my Patreon. Lastly, p a t r e o n dot com slash Weird AF News, where you can uh, support the show and uh, you know show your love for Weird AF News and join the you know join the Patreon, which is like. Well, I mean, I obviously it's joining the Patreon, but like what I mean is the Patreon is like a small community of fans of the show. They're like really into it. And uh, we have conversations in there and I post things and we they ask me questions and we just it's a nice little community in there. So if you'd like to join that, it, it's a good feeling and support the show. Join a small community of people who just like a little bit of a little bit more Jonesy in their life, a little bit more weird in their life. And I try to. I try to please. I do. So check that out. You can also get there from my website, weirdafnews.com as well. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your time as always. Thank you for being a supporter of the show. Tell a friend. See you later, weirdos. (laughs)